As the title says, I want to try making a bendy bus, and that's going to take a lot of my pre-existing knowledge, and also on top of that, add a whole lot of new stuff that I've never done before. I'm going to start with this fantastic bus mod that's in automation. Thank you very much. And then I have to start with 3D modeling, J-beaming an extra rear differential in, which I'll try to show, but we'll always need a little bit of knowledge on your behalf on how to troubleshoot problems. Then do something I have have never done before and that is to one make an entire crash structure from scratch and two add it onto the rear end of said bus so then it won't be in a way in which it'll just collapse in the middle yeah, it's gonna be a little bit tricky this is a lot of stuff i have never done before but i saw somebody do it on my discord and i thought you know what I really want to give that a try. So we're going to start off with our big behemoth here. We're going to go and make it out of just like the normal sort of things. We don't have the option, unfortunately, for a ladder chassis. So so as we'll just go some sort of monocoque, make it out of more steel than a rear engine, because these are always rear engines. If you notice at the back of a bus, there's like a step up sort of area. And that's going to make the 3D modeling a little bit more tricky because I'm going to have to one, flatten that down. And then two, make sure that it is actually there on the rear section thing. As for the suspension, it doesn't particularly matter. Probably some sort of like solid axle. I know that they're on airbags. I I'm not going to do airbag work. That takes a whole lot of stuff in BeamNG, which is just just really poorly documented and I don't know how to do things like that yet. I mean, I could probably look into it and then give myself an aneurysm and then have it done. I and mean, I don't want to go through that. So instead, we're just going to go a solid axle coil and oh, we have to have independent rear suspension. Forgot about that. So let's maybe just go double wishbone and double wishbone. Then we're going to try to make the most diesel-y of diesel six cylinders. Make it super chungo. Eight liters. You know what? It's not the biggest diesel engine, but we'll go for it. And we're going to try for no balancing mass because this thing is going to rev really low. Then a big ass turbo on here. We're going to try to keep it very cheap. Oh, you know, I do know that some of the top end ones have variable geometry, but I think we'll just go twin scroll for now. Then to replicate diesel as much as possible, we're going to run direct injection and we're going to run like a ethanol blend or something like that to give it like lots of low end power without pinging. Then we're going to run a rich then hopefully this thing will chug a bunch of smoke and no catalytic converter because we want it to look good and then some decent muffling oh the crank has failed all right so let's go some forged for now and you know what this is actually looking pretty good but let's bring this rpm down a lot oh uh that's just, yeah, don't need to look at that. No matter what I do, it doesn't seem that I can get the boost to really come on before about 1300 RPM. And that's a bit of a bummer. The only thing I can really do is variable geometry, but that doesn't bring it down much. So somewhere of just over 400 horsepower. And I don't know what it is in foot pounds or whatever that weird measurement is. We've got about 1200 Newton meters of torque. Pretty decent. What's she sound like? Doesn't sound very diesel-y. So maybe if I remove some muffling. Now, it sounds like. Eh, sounds good enough. I love the engine tilt though, like just boom. Like the moment it gets in torque, it feels like there's a little bit of a glitch that shouldn't be wobbling like that. Okay, well. Okay, devs. Then obviously rear wheel drive, though it's not gonna drive these wheels, it's gonna drive the wheels of the back bus. So then that way the back of the cabin doesn't have to lift up for the engine and you could just walk flat straight into the articulated rear. Then some sort of slosh box automatic, open rear differential, obviously. We're gonna go with drum brakes because they probably do come with drum brakes. Disc brakes on a big truck, not really a common thing. But unfortunately, they this game is really only calibrated for vehicle drum brakes, which is not very good. So we'll see how it goes. And then apparently, hydraulic ball is used a lot on bigger vehicles, so maybe we'll give it a try here. We'll go with some ABS for safety. Don't really probably need traction control. There's not going to be any airbags or even seatbelts, so... 
you know what? No safety. Even though this is a bad idea. Then air suspension. And then active sway bar. So then this thing can swing from the uh, to the side to allow wheelchair people on. You know what? Yeah, about 255s. That looks pretty good. And then we got the tire blowout thing. So maybe it's like a rim size thing. All right, we went cross plies. And they can deal with it. We are six tons, which I mean is pretty light for a bus, but yeah. So apparently we got lots of oversteer. So I think what we have to do is maybe make our front tires a little bit narrower. And guess what? Oh, no, no wheel popping. Nice. What does it reckon our top speed should be? Around 223? But we can only max the gearbox out, but it's not even reaching that speed anyway. Well, okay. If we add more gears, what does it do? It does not increase our top speed. Correct. Thanks. Yep. L glorious. So what sort of RPM do we have when we're doing 100 kilometers an hour? Looks like we're at a about 140 kilowatts. Translate late to here. 140 means we're at about, we're over a thousand RPM, which is more than what I would like for a bus. That's disappointing, but there's not a lot we could do. We could change that in J-Beam though, if we need to. Now it just comes down to styling, which isn't gonna be too particularly difficult. First, we're gonna go with generic bus color. So white, no metallic, and um, there, basically done. Why is there this cutout stuff already? Aren't I meant to put that in myself? It doesn't seem that this is mapped to any paint color that is weird why is that a thing hopefully we can put stuff over it no we can't oh no what have they done all right let's have a look here this is one of my first mods, so not everything would work. Oh, no. That's an understatement. I might have to contact this person to help him fix it, which is not too difficult. All you really have to do is fit in like some extra faces in here, extra faces in there, and you're all done. So I, I, ugh, weird choices have been made. We'll do what I think they did, which is just to try and fit things in. So they've clearly taken this model from somewhere else and don't know how to 3D model, which is disappoint. Because otherwise, this is great. I was really hoping to get a much bigger grill in here, but I won't be able to. Because unfortunately, I can't have something go to the... Ah. Ugh, disappointing. Oh, you know what? Actually, no, I do have an idea. We'll just have the grill protrude and go like that. Then shrink it on the Z depth and bring it out. There we go. All right. We have the grill that we want, kind of. Ugh. In fact, actually, what I'll do is I'll bring that back a little bit. Then instead... Instead, I will bring out my own patch. So, I mean, we've done good enough. You can barely tell. Perfecta mundo. Yep, not a thing to see here. Now just these lights. Oh, God. Let me guess. Same dealio? We can place headlights, but not over the holes cut in. Frick. This is a pain in the butt. How'd they do it here? They've cl Yeah, all right. So they've left this as a hole, and they've just put some lights over top. Oh, the jankery of this. Hmm. I was thinking of covering it up, but this would actually be easier to fix in Blender itself. So, yeah, we'll just clear that out for now. And instead, we'll grab something like this. Wait, why can't I see through this? Why? Why is it not doing a UV cutout? What the hell is going on? Wait, do cutouts even work? Grab just a generic cutout. Oh no. How do cutouts not work? What is happening? Oh dear God. This is a nightmare. Do I, I think I have another boss. But, oh no, I only have this sort of thing. I don't want to make a bus out of something like that. This is going to take a lot of 3D modeling touch up. Well, we'll leave it at that for now. In the front, we could fix up later. This is a tro- Oh my god. Oh, do I- mm -hmm. This is- I hate this. This is terrible. Uh, we're not going to use the chassis that comes with this because it's garbage. That's, uh, more like the game's not set up for this. So for the floor, we're going to make it as flat as possible by grabbing something like this. Why? Is there like a- there's a wall thickness. Why is there a wall thickness? What is ha- ah. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. But there's no reason to do it because it causes many of problems. And this vehicle is a mess. Oh my God. All right, let's just get this done with. Uh. Then we're gonna make this out of some sort of like rubberized sort of thing. So like a glossy plastic for now. Then we're gonna create the rear step area. There we go. I'd probably actually do better to create actual steps. 
But I don't care, because this is already an atrocity. Seats now. You know what, actually, my cheap-ass bench seats, I think, actually work quite nicely. Create a little bit of walking room in the middle, and this should be enough to fit two people. And then just put a bunch of rows in. Oh dear, I have to do the rear as well. Oh, I'm also gonna have to create my own light nodes and everything. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, I hate this all. I hate everything. Whoa, what is happening there? What? What is this? What has happened to the 3D? Oh, this is... Oh, I don't... I don't understand why cutouts don't work. It's so weird. It'll do, whatever. All right, good. Yeah, test track reckons we'll do. Six minutes. Perfect. Oh, it doesn't even fit into the screen. Noise. Things seem to be going all right so far. Collision mesh is jank. That'll be to do with the way in which they modeled it. Will it drive? Yeah, but it scrapes a lot. And I can barely hear it. Do I have the audio turned down or what? Oh, brakes, brakes are no good. Oh, brakes are bad. Oh. Is it too much torque from the engine stopping the brakes from working? Oh, well, first things first, my audio is really low. Oh, so much scraping. So much noise, I could barely hear the engine though. Oh. Oh, this thing sounds atrocious. I, I, I'm, I'm boosting the audio for you guys. For me, it's really quiet. All I can hear is just a lot of god-awfulness. Wait. Hold on. Did it already have a hole for an exhaust and I just didn't realize? God damn it, I'm an idiot. What about the front? Yeah, no. So the front hasn't made holes. That means that this hole was here from factory. Huh. I, I can go fix that. That's, that's easy to fix, probably, maybe. Oh dear god. Alright, wh what's a drive like? Let let's see what it's like before we butcher this thing with bendiness. And then I might go contact the person afterwards to see if they want help fixing this mod. I'll, I'll run them through how to do this because this is atrocious. What I might also do is like double uh, duallys in the rear for the tires then we can do that as well. But then again, I suppose we're running an extra axle? No, we probably still want it. At least for the rear section. You know, this thing doesn't handle so bad. What sort of top speed do we get now on the back straight with all of it scraping and bashing and whatnot? So just for anybody that's wondering, this like really low hanging mesh thing that happens sometimes if you try to make a mod body happens because you haven't lined the bottom of the body up with the Z axis to be at zero. Like that's pretty necessary to get very, very close there. And as a result, you get the jankery that we've got here. <laughs> Yay. So, oh, okay, 160. Oh, and top gear. Mwah. No, oh damn it, we're down a gear. Okay, so apparently high speed cornering is not its forte. And we're not gonna get back up to speed, are we? All right, how's it go on the off camber corner? Cause that is very important for the safety of vehicles. Especially ones which have people in them that don't have seat belts. A little bit of oversteer, but the shitty collision mesh is keeping me on point. Oh God, this is, uh, this is atrocious. All right, last hairpin, and then we'll call it for this. Oh, brakes are bad. Oh, brakes are really bad. Okay, well, that was not what was intended. All right, first things to do with this, unpack it. I mean, I could have exported from automation unpacked, but I forgot. Now, things have changed a lot recently. Like, a lot, a lot. First thing you'll notice that is like the main J-beams and all that sort of stuff are gone. The materials has now changed to some sort of like a code, which I can't even find. Here we go. The materials, so everything is like assigned this value, which is sure. And then the engine is also assigned a value. So this is where you'll find the main vehicle things. And we're gonna go with the Bendomatic bus, which is what we called it. Then what we're gonna do is find all the nodes that are hanging way too low. So we're gonna press control N and bring up all said nodes. And it is four to seven, which will be a four to a seven and change their height to something around maybe 0.7 instead. Then save that, come back here, control R and perfect. All right, let's just do that to the rest. Or just control F, find all of them, and then just replace them all with 0 0.7. And I don't care if the camera's changed because we're not really bothering with that. Save that, 
come back, control R, and after a little bit of weird floatiness, things have gone awry. Okay, well, what... <laughs> Uh, I think what's happened is the mesh is based off of, uh, the flex body is based off of where the, uh, vehicle bottom nodes are, and that would be the reference nodes. So A17, 13, and 18. A17, A13, and A18 have all moved to 0.7, and that would be, we got 13 here, and 17 and 18 there, so, yeah. You've got a flat right angle triangle, which is the reference nodes, and then there's some vertical ones, but yeah, that's the main thing. From there comes everything else to do with flex body. So let's change this to zero. And we were so close. All right, a 0.37, it's gone back to normal. This would be great if the vehicle was just exported properly from the beginning, but uh, I mean, not not everything. You, you can't have everything. My, my brain's no worky do. How does it drive now? There's still some scraping. What is that? Uh, oh, our engine nodes are really low. Okay. Engine nodes used to be in here, but thankfully they've now you moved engine nodes to the engine structure J-beam. And all of them are here. We're going to move these up. Let's just say let's just move them all up one. That's fine. Whatever. It doesn't matter if the bus is top heavy. Buses are just top heavy. Uh, kind of. Not so much anymore, but they used to be very top heavy. Save that, go back, control R, and now nothing is- oh, the transmission. Let's arm that as well. My bad. Now there's nothing except for some drag nodes, which is all to do with aerodynamics, which is a weird way in which automation does aero now, but at least it works. Driving away. We have fixed everything. I wonder if that was brake related as well. So let's brake at 100 kilometers an hour when we get there sometime today and brake. Oh, that is really slow getting to, oh boy. All right, let's take it back up to 100. Let's try something out quickly. We're gonna switch into neutral and brake. Oh, that's bad. Handbrake? Okay, handbrake is strong enough. But just the brakes themselves are weak as piss. Oh, God. Well, let's just go on to working on the thing. And to do what we want to do, we're going to cut the body at about here, I think, and put that on the back. Would that be too long? Maybe. And then this part here, we're going to cut off. So on a fresh blender, F4, import, DAE. The DAE is in here now, so we're going to copy this, paste that into there, bring it in, and there's our body. Let's just select the body, invert the selection, H to hide. Perfect. Now to do all the tedious work. I'm going to grab to about here, I think. Actually, you know what? Let's have a look. All right, so here we got a look at a bus, and if we measure that kind of distance, that comes to about there, about halfway through. So we'll cut it at about here, except for we are probably going to want this too, and then we're going to duplicate. Shift D, drag around, Control I, delete, and then we're going to drag that back, and that's going to go to about here. That's looking a little bit more like a bendy bus. And what we're going to have to do now is do a whole bunch of work on this one. So let's go ahead and hide Rear bus compartment. We're going to delete from about here backwards, I think. That looks about right. So we delete that, and then we're going to have to do a lot of cleaning up of things in here. All right, now to make the rest of the rear of the bus. First, let's start dealing with the floor. Then let's grab a loop section. Uh, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? God, why? Why do you have to be so difficult? This is turning out to be a really massive task with the jankiness of this body. Oh, God. Why must you be like this? Now that I've got it all selected, let's bring it out and it should go to about there. Yeah, really only a small gap and looks like we got some weirdness going on here. What is that? No, not the wrong way. Oh, no, those are the wrong way around. Oh, dear. So let's flip those around. And it's looking a little bit better. And then the rear compartment. Oh, looking fine. We're also going to have to create like an intermediary part as well to like do all of the squishy, uh, uh, squishy stuff. I don't know. My brain isn't working. Give, give up on me. There's no hope for me. Now that we've got a perimeter of that selected, we're going to duplicate this part. This is going to be called squishy center 
part and delete everything. Now we've got perfect little face thing. Okay, except, well, I haven't got it all done perfectly. You have to join that, join that. Now we've got, okay, well, apparently not everything. Let's just stretch it out for now. There we go. Um, not everything is lined up right. Normals reticulate outside. There we go. Nice. Now we're going to put a line between here. We're going to subdivide this line. Then we're going to select everything, reselect that, make sure this is set to active element, then scale down a little bit and then squish that back up. Then we're going to drag out a little bit Then we're going to scale back up and we're going to repeat this. All right. So I had a little bit of a crash and in that time I decided to just go ahead and make this sort of stuff because that was going to take the longest amount of time there. What I ended up doing was just uh, making one part, then scaling it across so then I could just merge them all together. And that just turned out fine. Did all the interior stuff. I showed you most of how to do that already. This will be the wrong color, but we'll figure that out a little bit later for now. I'm going to change the name of the main body to one. And these have been renamed because I don't remember what I named them before, before the crash. Then we're going to select those F4 export DAE into the folder directory that it was before. Now it doesn't need to be the same name as this. We can just create our own thing. And that's what we're planning to do here. Doesn't really particularly matter. And then select it only. Now, if we go back into the main JB, we're going to switch this to one. I'm going to save that. And you can see now that we've got the separated rear end of the bus. We'll deal with the engine and exhaust stuff in a bit. Probably going to get rid of this exhaust mesh altogether. But we got the flat floor, we got the seats in there, everything's looking pretty good. Now, we're going to create this mesh system back here. First things we're going to do is probably move this to be a little bit further forwards. So the nodes are a 0 to 3. So we're going to move 0 to 3. Three on the Y vector, which is the second one. If you ever need to look this up, it's the ID of the thing, which would be A0. Then position X is how wide, position Y is how far forwards or backwards. The more positive the number, the more further back it is, and the more negative the number, the more forwards it is. Uh, anyway, moving along. We're now going to move these to be a little bit closer to here. So they are 3.9. Let's just change this to 4. Four, and that'll just give us a little bit of leeway. So control S, I'm here, control R, and okay, good. But where uh, I didn't realize that there was a bit of a gap. Okay, so about 4.3 seems to be the number we want. Next, we're going to move A32 to A35, then save that. And oh, okay, what just happened? Did I, I think. Yeah, okay. So when the nodes don't line up with where the body at all is at all and you can't control R, that means you've stuffed something up. So let's control Z, control Z, 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 control S, control R, not getting anything. Ah, okay. I accidentally hit C here. So let's undo that. I meant to go control C on that. I don't know how that ended up stuffing up. And then we are going to respawn it. Great. And those nodes now are lined up to where we want them to be. Next is 64 to 67. And just to clean it up a little bit, we're going to go to 68 to 71, which is a little too far forward. Perfect. And that is the main back part of the bus. And we'll deal with the lights and everything in a bit. But for now, that's all good. We're going to have to now create, well, we don't have to. But to do the back end, just to keep it nice and clean, I'm going to create a new JBeam file. And in there, we're going to create... Uh, Basically just six points, no, eight points, four for the top. We're basically creating a rectangular prism and then four at the bottom. And then we're going to attach the suspension to it in a bit. And at the front of that, we're going to create a bit of a triangle section at the top and bottom. And then the back of the main part of the bus at the moment, we're going to create a triangle part. And then those two are only going to be joined at those pivot points at the at tips of the triangles. Make sense? No. Well, I'll try to run you through it. I just tried, sh thought I'd show you a little bit of a visualization with my hands as to how this is going to work. So at the end of the nodes, we're going to copy that. Then we're going to create a few blank spaces, put that in. This is going to be called rear pivot. And then this is going to be called F for front, T for triangle, then up. So front triangle up, then we're going to duplicate that. That's going to be F, T, D for down. So now we know that the rear point uh, of where we're going to start attaching to is 4.5. So we're going to go like 
5 and see where that puts us. Then the highest nodes we see around here are about 3.15. So we're just going to put that to three for the top one. And then the bottom, what is the lowest node position? 0.7? Yeah, I think 0.7 is what we were looking at. 0 0.7. And we're going to save this. We're going to go here. Now, if we hit refresh, you're just going to see that the nodes are going to like come in and drop somewhere. It's a little bit tricky. We're going to hit J to pause the game. Then we're going to refresh again. And we can see that that sits about where we want it to be, except it's off to the side. So change this to zero, save, come back, refresh, and perfect a mundo. Now we're going to want to attach this to 68 to 71. So let's go to the beam section. Oh, you know what, actually, this should also probably go in the new file that we're making. So let's go file, save as, and we're going to call this rear bus section thing -o. Then in here, we're going to get rid of variables. We're going to get rid of glow map. Yes, good. Slot types we can get rid of as well. Controller don't need. Drag model. Dread, uh, yeah, no, don't need any of that. Soundscape we don't need. Camera internals don't need. Props we don't need. And there, good. So basically information, and we're going to call this rear section. We're going to get rid of that. We're just going to put in this. Why? Well, I don't know, because I'm uh, self-absorbed. Should this not have underscores on it? I'm confused. Yeah, let's put underscores in there just to make sure. And then it's not going to have the bendomatic bus body. Instead, we're going to have these two parts. So we're going to put that one there, copy that, and then put this one in. This is going to be bendy and this is going to be rear now what this is doing is calling in a flex body this one and it's going to be joined to a bunch of nodes called bendy then what we're going to do is create another part which is going to call upon the rear mesh and it's going to be called the rear section attached to a bunch of nodes we don't have any of this yet though we're going to grab all of this we don't need any of these nodes because they're already used on the main body part and we don't need any of these things because these are all the lights and they're going to be reused but being sure not to remove this last bracket so we'll remove that and now we've got our node section our beam sections we're just going to run with probably the top beam section and just to keep the formatting easy we're going to save that and we're going to remove all of these node joiners don't need any of this for now that's a lot of beams my goodness, that's a lot of beams. Oh, no, and then we got beams <laughs> amongst the lights and then everything except the last bracket. So there's our beam section, which we'll clean up and make correct in a minute. Then our triangle section. We're going to clean this up as well. God, there's a lot of work involved here. So we're going to get rid of the chassis, I think. I don't think we need any of this, do we? All it is is just a slot and a blank mesh area. So that's fine. We can just get rid of that. So now that we got this, we can remove these from here because we don't need them there no more. The group is going to be called bendies because we're doing the bendy section first and self collision we're going to switch that to false then we're going to start putting in a whole lot of beams first we may as well attach the two nodes that we just created then we're going to duplicate this and the upper node this one is going to attach to 71 70 69 and 68 and then we're just going to do all of this tedious, lovely work that nobody hates whatsoever. Not even I. We should probably also attach it to all of these as well. So let's go 67 and 35. Now, theoretically, we could attach this to like pretty much every node in here because we want this to be as structurally sound as possible. But I'm lazy. So we're going to play it by ear as we go along. Honestly, it's probably just going to crumple the body a little bit, but uh, we'll deal with that later. We're going to now repeat this for FTD, which is front triangle bottom or down. Sorry. Oh, I forgot to put in what sort of slot type we are. All right. How do I make this formatting? Let's just go in. We're just going to grab like a suspension sort of thing so that we can have everything we need. Slot type. That's how that's done. Back in here. Paste it in and we're done. The slot type though is going to be rear section. We're going to copy this because we need to have it in here. So we're going to duplicate this. This is the type of slot that it is. And it's just going to be called rear section. Default is going to be rear section. And then this is going to be rear section. And then make sure that there's a comma there. Good. All right, save. Let's try doing a quick refresh and see what happens for now. I see nothing here. 
Oh wait, yeah, no, I stuffed up. Rear section is the slot type. This is the one that we want in here for default. Okay, we'll get this right. Why am I not seeing it? What is happening? Oh, because I put it in the wrong area. Hold on, let's... I'm an idiot. Putting it in suspension. Yeah, this has to be in the Bendomatic bus area up in the slot section. There we go. Ugh, all right, and... Okay, what's happening? Two hours later. All right, I stopped recording for a while to figure out what the issue was. Turns out that I accidentally removed this line of code and had a comma here. That was enough. And this is the sort of troubleshooting you're going to need to be able to do to be able to do this. Don't pile in questions down in the uh, comment section asking me all about this and that. That's not going to work. You're going to have to go on to like the Discord and ask for help there. There's something a little bit more in depth than in the comment section because I can't look over every single little bit of code you've done from you putting a comment into the dis into the comment section. I'm sorry, but this is the sort of stuff that you're going to have to learn. So if you know how to do this sort of stuff, this will be a helping hand on that sort of way to getting there as long as you know how to troubleshoot on your own. I won't be able to help you. All right, well, let's go back now and rear section bus, put in the bus a matic rear section thingy for Bobby. And the front node is working and that node is working fairly stiff. Nice. Now, two nodes, I don't believe is enough for a mesh to show up. So we're going to have to add a mesh to these nodes at circumference around here. This gets a little bit tricky. Try to bear with me. Because these nodes already have a group, what we're gonna have to do is add groups specifically to the nodes themselves. Are there example? So this is kind of the sort of stuff. This is a sort of stuff that should go at like the beginning where like node weight is, but this is added specifically only to these nodes. We're gonna have to do this now, except for adding extra mesh groups, which I believe is this, just this section here. So we're going to grab all of this and we're going to edit it. First, we wanted to add it to node 68. Node 68 inside of the bracket. Then get rid of this because we don't need that. And group is going to be bendy. Paste that in there. And let's save. Let's see if that does anything right now. We've got three nodes. Is that enough? Yes. Perfect. See, we're already on our way. Nice. Now, it's the wrong color. We will fix the color later. But we're now going to do this to 69, 70, and 71. Copy this. We want this to have proper me uh, mesh moving stuff. And then we're going to add it to 0 to 3. Now, this will have two different meshes per node, which you can add multiple in. I believe you add like a comma and then another one. But this is all we need for now. Now, if we move this node, uh, it's a little too solid at the moment. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to have to have the real section created first now. It's gonna be uh, annoying. So we're gonna grab group, we're gonna copy that, and in here we're gonna put that there. So this is group for the next section. And we're also gonna put a note in here to make it a little bit easier. This is going to be the rear section compared to the rear pivot. So then this way we know how things are, uh, are, are done. To make it easy we're gonna copy this, we're gonna put that there, and we're gonna call this R for rear F L. So that's rear section, the front of the rear section, left. We need a whole bunch of these now. It's going to be rear, front, right. Then this is going to be rear, rear, right. And then this is going to be rear, rear, left. Fun times! I'm going to make this about 5.1 for the front sections. Then for the rear, this is going to be somewhere around 7. I don't know, we'll uh, deal with that later. Then we're going to duplicate this. There's a lot of work involved here. Then we're going to give left. Oh god, what is left? Left will be like A3. We have a look at A3. It's a positive number for left and a negative number for right. Right. The left is going to be minus 1.22. Sorry, hold on. That's left. That's positive. Then we're going to copy this and we're going to go negative that number. And then the same thing over again. Negative that number. So now we have a flat bed. We want to make it into a cubular rectangular prism. So we duplicate these ones and we're going to make the height now the highest point we could see around here, which is about 1.3, 1.7, 2.3. Let's go about a three. Just, just round it off to three. Now, Save that. We're gonna come into here. We're gonna press pause. We're gonna refresh. And now we have our lower nodes, our lower nodes, our higher nodes, higher nodes. These need to be much further back though. So seven is gonna change to like 10, 10, 10, 
and 10. Now this should be a meter each, so we just added three extra meters, should be about to here, oh perfect. And then we'll do the beams and triangles in a second. We are however gonna change this to rear, put that in there so we can at least see what it looks like. Perfect. Now let's unpause. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we have no beams in there, so we're gonna pause, refresh. All right. Uh, I think we need to add another two meters on. So change this to 12. Done. All right, good enough. Now let's make beams. The most important ones being these ones here. And then we're just gonna copy this one and we're gonna go rear, front, hold on, LT for left. Top. Okay, duplicate that, change that to R. And to make this easy, we're gonna duplicate these and we're gonna get rid of the top section. So then we have all four four points connected to the top here. Now we're gonna duplicate that, except change it to FTD as opposed to FT up. Lots of names and numbers, but this is the sort of stuff you're going to have to do. So just duplicate that and D. Now let's bring it back here, refresh, J. And perfect, that's it. We've got this all connected now, and these are f falling away. Why are they? Oh, okay, yeah, because these are just dangly bits at the moment. What we should do is join these together as well. So we're just gonna put that in there. Then we need to do the bottom one. Duplicate that. That'll be rear, front, left. Now these triangles should hold their orientation. Perfect, and if we move this around a little bit, okay, it moves that, but it does not move the middle bendy bit. We're, we're dealing with this <laughs> moving in a second. Remember how we added extra meshes to things? Yeah, we get to do that again. So copy this. We only need to add it to the front parts, or we should only add it to the front parts. Paste that in there, front ones, save that, come back and refresh. Now, oh. Okay, well, we'll deal with that in a minute. But now we're just gonna move this and you can see the bendy part moves. Yes, isn't that fantastic? We'll be dealing with this in a little bit though, but I think we should maybe remove it from this group. So let's get rid of a group from here and then refresh and then move it. Okay, it moves a little bit better now. It's a little bit weird moving. Now let's connect the top nodes to the bottom nodes. But this is gonna be in the structure section. We're gonna change the name to rear structure. This is just a note, by the way, these green sections, so you don't have to worry about them. And we're just gonna start attaching them to the top parts. Uh, to the top, okay, yeah, I think that's good. God, there's so much, there's so much visualization to do. Because for each one of these, to get the maximum rigidity, we need to connect them across here, need to connect them across here, and then connect them downwards. Ah! So I'm gonna stop recording because this is gonna take a little while. I'm also going to get all of the rear nodes to connect and everything so that'll be all good. Then we'll just skip to the end and you can see what it looks like. Man, this was a lot of futzing about, but we've got it all working. We even put the triangles in. Now if you want to know how to do triangles, this is kind of how I laid it out. It's just, you gotta make them whatnot. And triangles do have a side. Purple is inside and green is outside. Oh, that was a lot of futzing about, and I'm not quite sure exactly what I did. I must have created some sort of like weird binding here, because when I drag this out, you can see it bends nicely, and then it bends back. Now, it shouldn't do that, but you know what? Actually, I don't mind that. The reason why I don't mind that is because uh, otherwise this tends to go all the way around, and uh, this will help self-write it. But if we keep going, now that the triangles are in, this will collide with itself, so it won't actually go through. So that is that done. Man, that's, that's, this has been a lot of work so far. Next, we're going to make the rear axle now. Oh, all right. This starts becoming a real pain in the butt. So first we have to make duplicates of the files. Then we have to relocate all of the nodes and then rename all of the nodes and then get all of the nodes to connect to the right things. Now this is a little bit more complicated than a normal node reconnection because when we're moving the nodes back, usually where the nodes are, they could stay have their same beams connected, but now we're getting the nodes to attach to the new rear housing section. So there's a little bit extra step in there, just getting you ready for it. So. Suspension rear, that suspension rear mesh, and wheels rear. Can we just control D this by any- Nope, okay, well I- I, I think- oh. <gasps> I think that deleted it permanently. Is that what control D does? Two hours later. So, we're going to grab suspension rear, 
suspension mesh rear and wheels rear. Can we just copy and paste them in place? Good, okay, we can and they'd just be called a copy. Let's just go in and put underscore x for now. Just clean it up a little bit because I know a lot of the times that they can't have spaces. So I thought I would just do that. So first let's play with the suspension rear, the main one, because this dictates pretty much everything else. And here's where renaming everything starts to become a real pain in the butt. We're just going to add x to basically everything that requires an extra name. So this is going to have x on the end of it. Uh, all of these variables, there's a lot of variables here, huh? Uh, so these variables we're going to copy and find then we're going to go to replace and add an x and then go replace that replaces nine copies of it immediately and let's do that for the rest of them all right so now these have all been changed uh the next unit doesn't particularly matter but this does a little bit to like um separate these a bit. So we're just going to put X on the end of these. It gets a little bit messy now because this isn't formatted, but that's fine. So now when we see them showing up in the tuning menu, so if we go into control W tuning under here, it'll all have like an X next to it. So you know that it's like the, the last one or the, the new one that we made. Now you can name this however you want, but this is how I do it. It keeps it nice and simple. What you should do is like rear section, rear suspension, like a proper nomenclature, I'm, I'm not bothering with that because I know I'm only gonna create one and it doesn't really matter what else I do, so this works. Then we got a default and then rear toe adjust X, add X to all of these. Lots and lots of stuff in here. The next one after that is also just a description, so we'll just put X at the end of that as well. A lot of just, uh, explanation here. So that is all done. Then we got subcategories, which we don't care about. Uh, we might change wheel hubs to a different category. There's only one of them though, so that's not a big problem at the moment. Then we have slots, yay! Okay, camso rear X, did I change? Yeah, I did change that up here. So now we got a slot type camso suspension RX. We go back to the main J beam, we got suspension R. And now we're gonna replace this, oh sorry, duplicate this and put an X there and an X there. And this is only the description, but that's fine. We're gonna put an X there as well. And then we got all of these node offset things here. So that'll actually help us in a minute. Let's find rear suspension offset X. Uh, those come from up here. The only one we're gonna to need to adjust is I believe Y. So let's replace this. Oh, sorry, duplicate this and put that there. Advanced settings, we'll leave that there. Rear suspension offset X. Adjust longitudinal position of the rear suspension X. Uh, then back into here, we got rear suspension offset X. All right, save that. Now that's making it complicated, but we'll get there eventually. Don't worry, guys. Now we have all of these slots. Okay, take this, control C, control F, then replace all of them with that with an X on the end. And now we've replaced only two of them. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. And rear hubs, X, cam, so suspension. Ah, okay, so this is in a different file and we'll be opening that up in a bit. So we'll replace all of that. Now this one should be in here. And this is gonna play a little bit of like a mess up here, but that's fine because we're changing them all anyway. Replace all, there's four copies, so two here, and then the ones that it's corresponding to. That's the effort we have to go to here to make sure this is all right. Okay, so the only ones we're gonna have to pay attention to is the ones that come up in different files. So this differential, there's an X here as opposed to at the end, because here it's got this extra little annoying add-on bit. Same thing here with the cam so suspension mesh section which is around in here somewhere. You know what, actually, we probably don't need to change the rear differential stuff. We may leave differential alone. Yeah, this is the only stuff that is differential. So let's get actually rid of the X because we're not creating a duplicate of X because we only are going to be driving the rear wheels, not the mid and the rear. It's a little bit weird, but that's where the engine has to fit, basically. I wonder if that's how they do it in real buses. I'm, I, I suppose I just assumed. Now, let's go on to the next section. Yay! Oh, actually, we should change the names of these as well. So this is Suspension Mesh X, Rear Brakes X, Rear Spindles X, Rear Core Levers X, Rear Sway Bar X. And I believe we changed this to have an extra X value in there. That, uh, that relates back to this when we did this thing. So this is what moves the nodes. Oh boy, okay, well that's tiring, but trust me, it gets more tiring. We're gonna change Self Collision to Falls. Now you don't usually have to do this, but it's probably a good uh, practice. 
The reason why we're doing that is because we go control T, you'll see that there's no like cutout like there is here. Let me uh, bring up the debug menu so you can see this a little bit easier. Mesh visibility. You can see here that there's a cutout for the wheel area and there's not here. Just to make things easier, yeah, we're gonna have that uh, just not collide. Then, hub R. Let's do all the replacements again. Oh, there's only one apparently. Oh, uh, okay, because this is for the uh, mesh addition, which for some reason they've put mesh in a different section. So we'll find that under here eventually. No, under here, sorry. Then all of these, woo! Good luck, have fun. This takes a while. All right, we have now done all of the nodes, not the worst thing in the world, and all of the nodes are sticking to each other, which is fan diddly tastic. Now what we're gonna have to do is come down and find some of these more brake groups. Find that and replace the brake groups. Now you'll notice that these are attaching to RW1L and RW1LL, and then a little bit further down, you'll find it's connecting to RW1R and RW1RR. But that comes in the wheels RX thing that you created. We'll deal with that in a bit. We're just gonna go down. Now we see that we're getting things connected to other things. So currently this is connecting to A17. Now we're getting into territory that I don't know very well. 17 is way up here. Well, that is weird. Well, let's change A17 then to RF1L and then 18 to the other one. Coming down here, you can already see some of our changes coming into play. The camber X thing, good. Looking at him here, the rear toe X, which is the thing we changed earlier. Uh, this is all looking fairly good. Nothing to do here. Here we go. Okay. Now we're getting suspension, probably anchor points, subframe to the body. Oh, that's right. We're using, whatchamacallit, uh, my, my brain completely faded. I don't even remember what it was that I was trying to say. Oh yeah. Double, wo uh, double wishbone suspension. So we got like a lower and an upper bit. Uh, let's just start attaching this to the body, I suppose. So we're gonna replace all of the A38s, which is right here. So it's to the left side. Upper. So let's replace all of those with RRLT, then A37. And A37 is here, so we're gonna replace that with RRRT. Done. Then A18 and 17 again. Oh dear. I believe they were RFL and RFR. Then coming down, we got A10. Which, if we have a look, is the front bottom, which we've already done these sorts of ones, so this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Hopefully these aren't gonna double up, but we'll give it a try. The alternative is we could add nodes in the middle and then add it to the rest of the structure-y sort of thing that we've done. I mean, you could make this a lot more complicated. This is actually gonna be a very shit, very simple sort of collision mesh. Eh, it's good enough. A42 now, puts us at the top. So you can see what I'm doing. Moving down, everything is looking fairly good. Nothing problematic yet. Triangles have all been updated as well because we did the replace as opposed to just changing the name all the time. All of this seems fine. All of this is good. We've got that X in there that we were looking at before. Bus rear spindles X. Then we've got hubcap RR. So let's replace that. X at the end. Only the two to replace, that's fine. Then we've got RR, which we'll have to go into engine to change this. But for now, we're just gonna replace all RR. RR X. That's a mistake. Let's not do that. <laughs> Okay, so if we come up against RR, we'll just replace that manually. As you see, that's caused a bit of a problem. The rest of this though, we do have to replace all of this, I just realized. Oh, you know what, actually, hold on, let's undo that. Let's find this one. It's gonna put an X in the middle, but that's fine, because we know what we're doing. The rest of these have all been replaced. RL will be replaced with X. A tire will have the same thing put on it. Only one, but that's fine. We had to double check. And the rest of this is all good. Self collision, false. Moving down, we got the X in there that we put in. Rear brakes X. So for the rear brakes, we're gonna change the same sort of thing. With an X on the end of it. Only three copies, that's fine. Makes it a little bit easier. Suspension X, rear brake power X, uh, subcategory brakes, that's fine. Then we've got some slots in here. So this is calling its own slots at the moment. So we'll find that, put that there and put an X on the end and there is only two copies of it. That means that we'll find, oh, this is for the mesh. So that will also be under rear suspension mesh X, but we'll get to that in a minute. This is all 
good. Wheel direction, all of that has been changed. We may have to increase the power of the brakes, but for now it'll be fine. We got here, we're gonna put an X on the end of this, so then we know which suspension bar we're pull calling upon. My brain is failing me. Slot type, driving dynamics, all this adaptive torsion beam. Uh, sure, okay, well, I don't know what that is. That is a new one for me. This is a big mess, but we'll leave that for now. Um, this one's a tricky one. I don't know what this is or why. You know what? Yeah, let's let's replace it. Just three copies of it. Hopefully that does what we need it to do. And this is for like the race one as well. Okay, well, yeah, you got selectable parts in here. There's a lot to do. Now the coilover section. Um, most of this is looking fairly good. These values have been changed. That's changed name spring RR. Two copies of that, that's fine. Then this one will change as well. Then after that, this is all good. Dampener RL. Hopefully this doesn't interfere with other things to do with adaptive suspension because I did accidentally make the stupid mistake of wanting to change my suspension, uh, uh, set my suspension to like a special sort of suspension. Uh, all right, moving down. This is all good. This is all good. Put an X there so we know what we're looking at. Oh, some more variables. My God, this is just filled to the brim. Moving on from that, this is all looking good. If you've been able to figure out what we're replacing so far, hopefully that'll make your life a little bit easier. Not everything in brackets is the stuff that needs to change, but this file is finally all done. Alrighty. Now let's do that two more times. Ah. But this is the most difficult one. I started with the most difficult one. It's like, save your desserts till later. The easier ones come later. And the mesh being the easiest. So we have suspension mesh. Let's go to Campsa Wheels RX now. So this is what we got. This is what it's going to be called upon. So let's copy this, go back to here, go control F. Okay, let's go back until... There we go. Okay, so... No. All right, nothing here is called. Where does this get called from then? Oh, here we go. Rear hubs, okay. Control C, Control V, and then let's just rename that to underscore X. See that like, it's, putting in a rear differential is not easy, don't do this, this is a bad idea. So yes, it's just simply with an X on the end. So we'll find this, Control C, Control F, Control V, with an X on the end. And we've replaced eight copies of it. <sighs> now we have the slots, Camso hub bearings rear. Oh, deary me. Place all of that. Got to put an X in here because this is once again calling upon that main one for the offset. We're going to make our lives just a little bit easier doing it that way. Now, everything else is looking fairly good. Then we have the hub bearings. Shaft <laughs> name. Okay, let's replace these with an X. And then we're going to do the same thing here and put an X on the end. Same. Re rinse and repeat. Then with these little ones, we're gonna replace them manually and then put extra little tidbits in. Okay, good. Is that everything? Oh, okay, good, we're done, guys. Whew. Let's actually quickly go in. Do I have that engine JBM open still? I right don't, let's quickly go change this. Open up the main engine, then look for RR. Uh, uh, there, good. Okay, so all of this is now gonna get changed to RR with an X. A little bit of an X in there, replace one co- Oh, okay. Well, we also need to change the half shafts, I think. Did we do that? Yes, we did. Probably didn't need to, but that's fine. We'll do it anyway. Save and close. Okay, what next? Oh dear, engine, uh, that's all good. Back to here. Uh, what was the thing we were doing? We were working on wheels. Now that we got hubs done, we could probably close this off. Wait, we never changed this. Yeah, that, that was one of the most important things to change. So it's under Camso Wheels Rear X before the explanation. So this is what the slot type it's looking for. So if we go to Wheels, we'll find that it's looking for this. Then it's going to go default to uh, this number. So here, that's why we needed to know that that should go there. So if we hit Control F, you'll see that there, yeah, and then just a little bit. It's, it's a whole to do. My God, guys, just don't. <laughs> we'll keep going because so many people have asked me how to do this and I've always said it's really complicated. This has gotten a lot more complicated. This, when I first did this on my first truck that I did this with, it was not this hard. It was hard, but not this hard. They have made it a lot more like editable, a lot more like you could do a lot more stuff to it. The effort involved is a lot more now.
Oh my god. At least we get to do what we want to do, so yeah, alright. Let's start changing things. Flex bodies. You know what, actually, no, that could stay the same. This changes. So flex body stays the same because we're using the same mesh. And the mesh is what we have in Blender. Then we will have to come in here eventually and change the position of this to be further back. So I think this will be somewhere around five meters. We'll fiddle with this later. Oh, actually, you know what? So we'll change this for now, knowing that we may have to change the visual mesh to a different position later. Then we have all of these values. How many are there of each thing? A bunch, okay. And then the same for RW1L. Then moving a little bit further down, everything here seems fine, nothing being called upon. Hey, we got some rear PSI. We should change this, same as we do everything else, and leave that under there, rear rim stiffness. Well, this is looking fairly good. Do we have self-collision in here? No, not by the looks of it. Uh, coming down, everything else has changed. All of these will stay the same. All looks good, all values are good. Okay, save! Now this should be the final one. Rear suspension mesh. And this one is fairly simple. So we have cam, so suspension, rear mesh. So because we know how we did this, we're gonna go here and put an X there. Now is that, just to make sure, we're gonna go back to the main cam, so suspension, rear. And good, there is no X at the end here. Just to, just to make sure I didn't fiddle with things. Then this changes, this changes, uh, brake mesh. All right, and that gets an X at the end of rear, but not at the end of there. Okay, good. So we'll just put it at the end of the rear X, then rear brake mesh X, slot type brake mesh rear X. Okay, good. Oh boy. All right. Um, one last thing we're gonna do quickly is under the main one. We've got the extra X offset here, and we're just gonna put in an extra value. I think of. Five. Control S, then back in here. Oh, please work. Please, oh God. Please, please, please. All right, well, we got, looks to be suspension in here. It's just in the wrong place. So we went three to five. Oh, that's right, okay. This is gonna need to go back to like, I think 12? Or was 12, no, 12's like here. Let's go to 10. Zero, control L, control R. Uh, suspension is pretty much in the right place. Now, our wheel hubs are in the wrong place? Or is this just the mesh? Where? Okay, so we're not actually getting wheel nodes right now. I don't think. Yeah, no, it's got the hubs here correctly done. Why is you no do it? Uh, all right, so if you press tilde, which is next to your one key, found duplicate controller of the same adaptive suspension rear sway bar. Please make sure there are no name overlaps. By default, controller names are of, okay, so. Adaptive rear sway bar. Oh God, where was that? Ah, oh, okay, that's a thing. Is that all we need to do? Cool. Replace those two, save. Let's come back into the game, control R. Well, it's got no error this time. Rear PSI XX. Oh, okay. We've uh, had a bit of an oopsie with the wheels. <laughs> Rear PSI XX. So uh, you'll find that these have an extra X on it and that shouldn't exist. Good, okay. So I just made one little oopsie there. Control R, okay, good. We still have no mesh showing up, however. Duplicate beam found here, okay. Uh, get rid of that duplicate. That shouldn't be doing it, but we should clean it up anyway. Uh, you know what, actually, I think we'll skip most of that. Most of that's too much of an issue. Is it because the mesh is in the wrong place? Let's go suspension mesh. Uh, y position for this. I'm gonna switch that to 10. Does that fix it? Is it just because uh, that doesn't move with it? Let's have a look. Hey, look at that! It does show up! Okay, perfect. Next, we'll go to the wheels, and we had the collision mesh for those under flex bodies. Set to 5, so let's change that to 10. They're pretty darn close to where they need to be. The only thing is, is the mesh is attached to something else. So we're missing the RW1RX. X nodes and L nodes. Oh, okay, group is wrong. Yep, okay, that was my bad. I don't think this will fix it, but let's give it a try. Okay, we're not getting the nodes, but this is fixed now. <sighs> Why are the nodes no show up? What, what, what are you doing to me? See, the nodes should be right here. Let, let me show you quickly. Over here, we have the RW1R, wait, what? There's an X in here, which means it's in the wrong place. Okay, all right, all right. That means that this is not being moved with the other nodes, which it should be. Let's change this all to 
10. Save and refresh. That now looks correct. There's no X's in there. And we have nodes! We've done it! All right, which wheels is it gonna drive? None. Uh, it's not even gonna steer. Everything's broken. Okay, well apparently I actually hadn't done anything wrong. Let me let me show you something. Use my controller, accelerate, nothing. Steer, absolutely nothing. Use my keyboard. What's going on? Does, does my controller no work? My controller should be working. Well, I mean, we've got a working vehicle now. Woo! And it like has a self kind of like rubber banding sort of thing where it wants to bend back in place. I'm not entirely sure why that's happened. But... I don't know, maybe it's a good thing? Maybe not. Oh, you know what? It doesn't really want to go around corners, does it? Because it's trying to push itself straight. Damn it. All right, let, let's get this controller working. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we do have controller now. Okay. Let's see how this thing controls. That was weird. Uh, where are I? Can I jackknife? Let's see. It will let me jackknife. Nice. Nice. Uh, now all we have to do is put a bunch of weight over the rear because it is way too light. And you can see that by the fact that the rear suspension is lifting up hugely. So if we hit... Well, we'll get rid of this first. Goodbye. Control N until we come around to weights. These are only 39 kilos a piece. So let's start by adding a lot of weight to the rear. Oh, you know what, actually, no, first we gotta move the engine back there, don't we? So we'll start by moving the nodes back, then we're gonna make them attach only to the rear body of the vehicle. Engine structure. Oh boy. So much stuff has happened so far. But let's just move everything forwards on the nodes. So then, oh, we can get this to add weight to the rear. Now this is probably gonna make the rear end like into a bit of a jello sort of thing. It's not gonna be great. Uh, engine is in here, it's a little bit high. Uh, but now let's go in and change the beams they're connected to. They're all connecting to each other through beams and here we go. Uh, we want this to now be all of the other, oh there's a lot of beams in here. Goodness gracious. And that looks to be Good, control S. All right, let's bring it back, control R, and please. Okay, our exhaust nodes have all fallen to pot, but this is looking a lot better. And save that, and bring the exhaust back now. Oh dear. Uh, it's, it's fine, we'll get to that in a second. It seems though it's still to be a little bit light on the back. Let's just, uh, this is stupid, but let's go 100. <laughs> It'll probably turn everything to mush, maybe even break. Let's try it out. Okay, you know what? No, it's actually holding up pretty well. So we got our offset height. Let's change this to 0.7, whatever the rest of the numbers are. And what do we get? Uh, the suspension seems to sit a lot better. Suspension travel seems fine. Doesn't seem overly stiff or anything. That's good. All right, let's just clean up the flex body then. Sometimes the simplest solution is the best solution. All right, good. We'll fix the exhaust in a minute, but oh boy. Yes, now we could move the camera if we wanted to, but I am happy with where that sits at the moment. Uh, where is the engine? The engine doesn't show up. Where- why is the engine not showing up? Oh wait, because I probably- probably because I didn't move the engine position. Oh dear, this thing gets a lot of understeer and that rear end swing out is a problem. We'll try to figure that out later, but for now, let's just enjoy the glory. It works. I'm probably gonna go in and make a turning steering wheel now, which I have a video on how to do that. You just have to know that, uh, some of the files are moved position for that. Uh, then I'm also going to attach the exhaust, much like I did other things. I think we'll be good to take it around a map where you can drive a bus realistically. Oh, that tank slapper though. Oh. Ugh. 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 God, I love this. It's so good. Wait, are we- Oh no, we've, we've joined with ourselves. Oh no. Oh, this is bad touch. Bad touch. Okay, um. How do I fix you? Uh, let's go up here and uh, right there. Good. Yoink. Like a glove.
Well, we've done a lot of work and pretty much everything is how I wanted to be. Now, the reason why it was uh, going back to straight and didn't want to bend is because these nodes here that were back here, when I put in the collision mesh, which you could see the green stuff, it was then bouncing up against these, meaning that these were holding it in place. <laughs> it was just a bit of a mess, but everything now works as expected, except for the fact that you know, maybe it's a little bit heavy. The other thing I might do is maybe reduce the drag on it. I've got a little bit of drag on there for like aero purposes, but it is a lot slower now. And to uh, reduce the amount of drag, all I have to do is go here and put that to like 0.5. And hopefully that'll help us with our uh, slowness issue. Even though the fact that this thing is 11 or 12 tons, so let's have a quick look. Yeah. Uh, 11 and a half tons. And the thing only has, what was it, like 400 horsepower? That is not a lot of power. And not a huge amount of torque to be pushing this thing quite as fast as it does. Like, it is so slow. You know what? Let's compare it to a vehicle that is actually properly designed. Let's bring it up to the start line. We are ready. Oh, oh, I got pipped to the line because... Frickin' staging and all that stupid shit. Ah. Uh, am I faster than him? Oh, I'm actually faster than him! Yes! Alrighty, in comes that... Big talk! Yes! Oh my god, I am actually faster than him. That is so surprising. I did not think that would be a thing! A 25 second quarter mile. There are not many vehicles that are this slow. Let's quickly pop over. What is the weight of this? This is actually only a little bit heavier, like a little over half a ton heavier. And now does it want me to go all the way around to the beginning again? Oh, I was hoping it would just put me back to the start finish line. Well, let's drag them back. You know what? I think he's going to have a slightly better turning circle than me. Why are you... Where are you going? That's not how you get out of here. I'm not going to be out of three-point turn. What are you doing? I can't three-point turn either, because I'm just going to jackknife. <laughs> eh, there we go. We jackknifed already. Yeah, there's <laughs> not much hope for me. Oh, dear. This is going to be much worse than I'm, when I'm actually in the city, isn't it? All right, let's go. How are you doing, bro? I think he's stuck. Oh, no. Really? He's st Oh, that's hilarious. You know what? I'm just gonna, yeah, restart. I'm gonna do it that way. Just save a whole bunch of time and effort. And go. There we go. All right. Much better this time. Immediately from the outset, I am faster than him. I'm guessing that they probably have a little less power, maybe a little more torque. I don't know. I would like to have a slightly louder engine, however. So maybe I'll do a sound mod as well when I go to upload it to the BeamNG repository. You guys can take this uh, mod and uh, do whatever you want to it. If you, oh my god, if you try to move the stick whilst in this mode, it janks out the camera. That's not great. Uh, I didn't realize that would happen when I press F7, but okay. Okay, 18 FPS. Fantastic. Let's try doing a little bit of traffic work now and see what it's like to have to drive around other vehicles in our super quiet bus. So we're going to slow down. We're going to try to do a right hand turn. Oh, turning circle is ass. Oh my God, that was atrocious. All right, I have an idea. Let's quickly pull over to the side here. And we are going to turn up the maximum steering angle. Maximum steering angle multiply all the way up. Let's go for a bit of a drive. The thing does get wheel spin if you floor it from the get-go. Oh, they have parked cars as well. Interesting. Okay, well, I want to turn here. You guys have gotten in my way. All right, here we go. This is a wide corner, so it's a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Our steering is a lot better now. Now let's try doing a right-hand turn. Uh, traffic seems clear. Let's go. Mm, we're quite broad. And our rear... Oh, it cleared. Okay, nice. There you go. Then it's my turn to go. Perfect. So much better. Now let's try another right turn and uh, try going up into the um, more hilly section here. 
Oh god. Oh, okay, well... We've run into the one issue that I have had, which occasionally it'll stick when it jackknives. Which I'm not entirely sure why it does that, but... It's an easy fix, all you have to do is yank it apart. I... Not entirely sure, I get the feeling that it's the nodes overlapping. If the frame rate is not quite right, it'll accidentally have the node go on the wrong side of the collision mesh. So, we bring out the triangle. The corner node here will accidentally end up inside here, and then when it tries to pull apart, it's on the wrong side. I wish that there was, like, a way around that, but I haven't been able to find one so far. It is something that I've struggled with in the past. We're actually getting a decent frame rate now, now that it's had a little bit of time to load in. Like, high four mid 40s to mid 50s, not bad at all. Speed limit's probably, like, either 50 or 60 kilometers an hour, I'm not entirely sure. Lots of lovely little traffic around. Oh god. Why have you, why is there a big gap in front of you? Oh my god. Everyone knows this driver. The one that like doesn't know how to pull up to a light. Who's beeping? It's a red light. What are you doing? Stop beeping. Okay, this is annoying. Green light. Where we go? AI apparently still has some way to go. Let's not go into the tunnel. I'm not ready for nightmares. Go broad wide. Oh. This actually drives pretty good once you get the uh, steering angle multiplier turned all the way up. This thing becomes a lot better. I might even want to turn the steering angle multiplier even further up. Now, I don't know how you do intersections where you're from, but that's how you're meant to do it here in South Australia. You start by going into the middle of the intersection, then waiting for it to be clear, then you turn. I know it sounds dangerous, and at first, Pretty much everyone thought it would be. Now, how does this thing do with being bent over a hump? Green light. It looks like, yeah, okay, it doesn't like it. It needs to have a little bit of like, um, play on its up and down movement. Oh, come on, baby. Nope, okay. Uh, all right, let's bring you to us. Oh, that's the wrong buttons. Oh God, handbrake, race rear differential. This guy is totally GDA 5 to me on the, like, traffic stop of, like, pulling up next to me. Okay, both wheels are spinning. With no forward momentum. Bugger. Alright, let's go back. I'm gonna get a little bit of a run-up this time. God, you just reminded me so much of GTA 5 drivers. They just... If you're not perfectly lined up... Oh, no, no, they actually wanted to turn. They just didn't know how to be in their own lane. And what about here? Oh, God, that really does lift up the middle axle. So maybe we'll make, I think, the top triangles that I was talking about earlier a little bit softer, maybe? So then the rear is taking up pretty much all of the stra- No. I'm afraid then it'll collapse due to the weight of the vehicle. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how- Oh, I shouldn't have- I shouldn't have slowed down! Oh my god, the front wheels are lifting up! <laughs> hold on, hold on, I need to show you that again. Alright, um... It's like reversing with a trailer, except I'm not actually using a trailer. It's problematic. Go! Yep. <laughs> okay. There we go. At this point, the front tires... How do real buses deal with this? Maybe they have, like, limitations on driving in hilly environments? Is that a thing? Because <laughs> the rear is lifted off as well. The thing is literally teetering in the middle. I have never thought about this before. How would you deal with that? Maybe it's just meant to rely entirely on... So it will have like one strong and then one weak, and then just entirely rely on the rear axle holding the back up? Like a trailer? Yeah, you know what? Actually, that might work. You might have to do that at some point, but currently this thing... Oh, does not do good. Ugh, on hills at all. No. And clearly the final evolution, the final revelation, I don't know, whatever word starting with that sort of sound, is to take it to Monaco GP racetrack. Oh god, okay, well, I wasn't paying attention and I kinda didn't say it. Let's go around this time and not be, yeah, silly. Can we, okay, let's, we gotta be careful now about clearing things. It should be able to clear buses. I mean, Monaco is for rich people, so maybe there's a bit of an issue with there not being maybe many buses, but I don't know, I feel as if there should be buses in a place like Monaco. It's still a city, even if it is primarily just for the opulently rich to evade taxes in. I honestly don't know how Monaco exists, to be honest. 
Oh, that shading is not great quality over there. Alright, that's good. All's fair. Push harder. Go faster, longer, stronger. Oh, this thing is pretty slow. We're getting there, though. There we go, at the top. Dealt with that hill quite fine, but then again, I had a lot of speed. Long round corner, rear wheel drive, rear engine. This thing is basically a Porsche on steroids. Sorry, I mean donuts. And then coming down. Oh, a little bit of fish daily. Oh, that is very much dictating where my front tires are going. It's very much like you've got a, an overweight trailer. And then we're going to start braking because our brakes are not the strongest. And then hairpins. Do I have... I might... No, okay. No, no, no. We're good. Oh, hello. That wasn't meant to happen. Uh, I'm not so sure what side of the... Yeah, this would be the right side. Being somebody that drives on the correct side of the road, I get very confused sometimes about other places that drive on, like, alternate sides of the roads. So... Oh, God. Okay. The first hairpin, fine. This one... Not, not so much. Oh... Okay, well, not quite going to plan. Can I actually do this? No, I, I don't think it's actually possible for me to get through here without like swinging super wide at the beginning. Eh, that's fine, we'll just push the nose through. It's like buses, they just hit cars sometimes. It's, it's fine. The, the bus is the king of the road. If it was anything like the ocean, it's literally the bigger vehicle has right away. So, I mean, if you get hit by a bus, it's your fault. <laughs> okay. Oh, turn, turn, turn. And talking about boats, the place has massive boats because, once again, the opulently rich. And there's just a hole in the mesh. Okay, great. I really should get the updated one, but I don't want to update this map because I have all my times on the previous version of the map, and I don't want to invalidate them. But maybe I should. You know what? I think I will. I'll just invalidate all previous times by saying like, okay, well, we get like a time bonus. Might do a comparison time between both and see how that goes. Okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this, am I? Brick slow down. I think my vehicle is literally longer than the chicane. And then turn. Good. I mean, I'm not timing this. That, that would be stupid. But maybe I should have. And maybe I should have been a bit stupid. Look at all of the people on the boats. All those people were renting out a boat for the Monaco GP weekend. I wonder how many, like, thousands of dollars they spend. Maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars to rent out a boat to be in the docks at this point. Like... This is... Probably... Oh no, I popped a tire! One of the most expensive uh, events in the world. Not only is this the most expensive place in... Well, one of the most expensive places in the world to live. It's also, like, one of the most famous and popular events in the world. Of Not only just, like, one of the most famous and popular uh, sporting events. So, like, out of all of the sporting events, it's one of the most popular. And this race in particular is the most... Like... It's a culmination of the perfect storm of, like, how expensive things are going to cost at this point. Anywho, now we come down to the start-finish line. Perfect Amundo. I tried to stay in my lane sometimes, and then I just kind of gave up at some point. We got a popped tire somewhere. Oh, it is one of the middle tires. Okay, weird. And across the line. <laughs> well... Handbrakes don't work too well. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It has been a nightmare for me. But at least now I have a bendy bus. You know how many people could say that they have legitimately made something quite this stupid? I mean, there's going to be something maybe a little bit more wild coming next week. I do have something very much in particular in mind that I want to try out. I believe I was just driving on the wrong side of the road for America, right? No, no, that was right. That was correct. Uh, a little tricky dicky. Uh, get a little bit of run up for this, otherwise we won't make it. Uh, this will be up in the BeamNG repository. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. It has been a real uh, journey 
Yeah, let's go with Journey. You know what? Nah, I don't, I don't want to drive around city roads. I just want to take this thing and cruise the highways. Maybe I'll do a, um, a camper van. Like, yeah, you know those people that live in their vehicle sort of things and some of them do buses and stuff? This would probably be like a pretty epic one. Oh, God. Like a, maybe make it a double decker sort of one. Oh, 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 oh. that's fun. That's all God. Okay, well, that's less fun. Uh, is, there, is that meant to be like a jump? Is that a challenge? Interesting. But now, though, guys, I want to thank my channel members, and that is specifically Ruben and DeHellerman. Thank you very much for being channel members. The rest of you, I hope you have enjoyed your time. But for now, I'm heading out. Mm, goodbye. What am I doing? Clearly, I should have brought this thing to the jump arena just to see how it goes before we completely sign off. I want to see how this thing deals with, like, an extreme crash. Was I meant to wait for a green light? Oh, okay. Wait for a green light? The thing really speared out as it went over the edge. All right. Reaching our top speed. Bouncing off the rev limiter, but that's fine. Who needs an engine? Oh, Nan! Touchdown! Just before the 300. Oh, okay, it dealt quite well, except the brakes are shit! Oh! That's fine.